Feminism is a global movement that has had a far-reaching impact on societies all around the world. The vast array of countries and cultures that it arises in suggests that the challenges that it faces in various contexts can be quite different. Recently, there was an article which described how the police in China are cracking down on extreme feminism online in an effort to clean up the internet. The goal of this is to address extreme organizations which take a seemingly just stance to gain large numbers of supporters. The fear is then that the group can later be mobilized to stir up trouble and disrupt social order. Such is part of a broader problem of online censorship in China. According to the Freedom on the Net 2012 report, China was ranked as the third most restrictive country in the world when it comes to internet access, after Iran and Cuba, and, of course, places like North Korea, where internet use may not even be allowed for the average citizen. There are a few rules that guide censorship, namely, do not jeopardize social stability, do not organize, and do not threaten the party. Such can, in practice, serve as a massive impediment for those who wish to engage in political activism and is occurring within a broader context where the freedom of the press faces constraints. Some have noted how the Chinese government has engaged in harmful and discriminatory efforts to push women into subservient gender roles. Although the Chinese Communist Party seemed to initially support gender equality, the party's primary organization for promoting gender equality has, in recent years, begun to sponsor programs promoting specific, stereotyped gender roles that emphasize women's subservience. Given this environment, it's unsurprising that feminism has faced substantial barriers. For example, Feminist Voices, a social media group on Weibo, which is China's censored version of Twitter, had its account deleted at a time when it had over 180,000 followers. As one article puts it, Without freedom of association and without a free press, China's women's movement has to be exceptionally nimble and creative. The arena for their ingenuity is often social media. For example, when authorities banned the hashtag MeToo on Weibo, one user came up with the idea of using the emojis for the Chinese words rice and bunny. And for a while, feminism persisted under the pictograms, at least until the coded language was discovered. With that said, the feminist movement still persists, with The Guardian noting that, the shrinking public space for discussing women's rights in China makes it even more extraordinary that a feminist movement is able to survive at all. The basis for its success, it is suggested, is the ability for the movement to connect with and address everyday issues that affect women. The movement has also received help from those in other countries who do not face the censorship that feminism in China must deal with. The state of affairs in the United States is quite different. For example, the Me Too movement, which had a relatively quiet beginning, gained a tremendous amount of exposure primarily through the means of the press and social media. Such provided the working space for the movement to go viral and lead to what some have referred to as a moment of national reckoning. Such is what also distinguishes the present time from the relatively recent past when social media was virtually non-existent. Its presence, some have argued, magnifies and amplifies the power of individuals sharing their stories. It allows women to talk to each other and hear each other in a way that makes you feel less isolated and alone. However, with this comes challenges which seem unlikely to arise for feminists in China. There are a host of problems that can accompany the use of social media. 
One example can be seen in the criticism that has arisen against the Me Too movement. Some have suggested that the sharing of experiences of sexual assault and harassment, combined with social media, can give rise to a sort of mob trial in which a good idea can become mass hysteria in an instant, and important basic rights and responsibilities can be set aside. Another article claims that it harnesses social media's mechanisms to drive users into escalating states of outrage while exhausting us to the point where we cannot meaningfully act. In other words, Me Too, despite the best of intentions of so many participating, is everything that's wrong with social media. Others have leveled more general criticisms at online movements and trends. They argue that creating real policy change from them can be difficult, as the movements can quickly arise and trend for a period of time, but fail to remain cohesive enough to threaten those in authority. One potential challenge that is raised suggests that new eras of protest will have to learn how to combine the ease and speed of online connectivity with the long-term face-to-face organizing that gives physical protest its strength and staying power. Moreover, the relative amount of freedom that we have when disseminating information can operate as a double-edged sword. While causes that are good are now capable of reaching out to the public, the very same platform that enables them to do this can also allow for the spread of misinformation. As one article notes, some research suggests that U.S. adults who prefer to get their news through social media are more likely to share fake news than those who prefer to get news via conventional methods such as newspapers, TV, or websites, according to a study released by the Pew Research Center. One of the points that I have previously made is that feminism is not a uniform, homogenous entity. Rather, there is a significant amount of variation that the label encapsulates. Part of what this video illustrates is that the variation does not only occur with regards to what feminists believe and what their goals are, but also with regards to the situation that they find themselves in. When it comes to the ability for feminists to utilize the internet, the press, and social media, the articles I've referenced seem to describe two different situations. In a sense, it seems fair to say that those in countries like the U.S. are clearly better off than those in China. And yet, at the same time, it appears as if this relatively high degree of freedom also introduces new challenges of its own. With freedom comes an immense amount of responsibility, and the validity of this principle appears to be illustrated in the strengths and weaknesses of social media. While the capacity for good ideas to gain traction and spread can be facilitated by these tools, the same can be said for what is hateful, harmful, or misleading. The very means that can build a movement can also contribute to its own destruction, and it's up to those who are participating in online education and activism to make wise decisions when promoting their beliefs and responding to critics. When it comes to social media, virtually everyone is allowed to have a voice. However, this too can be a double-edged sword. While this can allow those who might not otherwise have a voice to offer important ideas to the public discourse, it also has the potential to give those who have little to contribute access to an equally as large audience. This, it seems, leads us back to the idea of responsibility. The ability for information, both true and false, to spread on social media requires that its users be vigilant and skeptical of what they come across. Perhaps the challenges that arise for the average person when it comes to evaluating information and sources may tempt them to view China's approach in a sympathetic way. Given the propensity for misinformation to spread, and the potential for mob rage to fester, it may seem understandable why strict censorship guidelines are in place. 
And yet, the dangerous risks that an authoritarian approach towards managing this realm can pose is likely to be a trade-off that many are unwilling to make. If that's the case, then, at least to some extent, the responsibility lands on us to be vigilant and proactive in our search for the truth. As a comparison between feminism in China and the U.S. illustrates, there are significant privileges that the movement has in some places relative to others. Yet, such do not guarantee success, and it's upon all of us to ensure that they function to make the world a better place.